add to our clinic, our referral from clinic, concerns that the, I'll say the ultra-right Christians are upset about. Should that be part of our message nationally? Listen, I'll, I'll let the, the party go through the process of putting the, the platform together. But your personal platform. But, well, the things that, as I travel across this country and I talk to people, I know what people care about. And that's not to say that there are going to be things on that uh, uh, that platform that are not important. But I know what I hear. And what I hear is, it's, it's Governor, we need to get somebody that actually knows how to get this country back working again. We need somebody that will really focus on creating a climate where job creators know they can risk their capital and have a chance to have a return on investment. They come to me, as a matter of fact, a year ago when I was up here in September, or last September, and individuals came up to me, county attorneys and sheriffs from New Hampshire saying, Governor, thank you for securing the border because it's impacting us up in this part of the country. So I know how to do that. I mean, I've had this experience of being the governor of a 1,200-mile border with Mexico. I deployed our National Guard last year. We saw the apprehensions go down 74% when we surged into those areas. If this country, if we'll commit our personnel, commit the strategic fencing that we need to have in the right places, and the aviation assets. We're not using our aviation assets at all to fly from Tijuana to El Paso to Brownsville. Looking down 24-7, when you see activities that are obviously illegal or suspicious, then send fast response teams quickly to address those, and we can secure that border. That's what I hear Americans talking about. I hear Americans talking about, you know what, this weekend's a great example of it. We're on high alert because of ISIS. And we know how to deal with ISIS. We've seen America step back time after time after time, whether it was in Libya, whether it was in Egypt. We've seen how our best friend and our, and our greatest trading partner in the Middle East, Israel, has been treated by this administration. We need, to, we need to have a coalition with our Gulf state partners, with Israel, with Egypt, with Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Turkey, and eliminate ISIS from the face of the earth. We can yes, do yes. that. And that's what I hear Americans talking about. And, and I tell people, on my first day at work, we're going we're gonna to start getting this country back together by opening up the XL pipeline and having no know how to get this country back working. Let me just share with you very quickly my, my vision to get America back working and get America back working in a hurry. And it has to do with North American energy. Canada, the United States, and Mexico have more energy reserves, known energy reserves, than Saudi Arabia and Russia. We develop those. We drive down the cost of electricity. And I know this can happen to in my home state. Remember, it's the 12th largest economy in the world, right? We saw electricity prices go down 40% in the state of Texas in the mid 2000s because we use those resources we have. We can do this across this country. You couple that, you couple that driving down electricity cost with corporate tax policy. We've got the highest corporate tax rate in the Western world. Drive that down. Cut that corporate tax rate. It does two things. Number one, if you lower the corporate tax rate 10%, you will raise mid-level wages by 5 to 10 percent. Every blue-collar union worker in this country ought to stand up and say, Perry, I'm voting for you because you are going to raise my salary. And that's, we can do this. You couple those together and you will give an incentive to manufacturers who have left this country historically over the last 20 years to come back to invest in this country and you'll see a manufacturing renaissance in America like we have never seen before. about the recent Supreme Court. I agreed with those four justices that were on the losing side, but I agree with them. But the, but the fact is, we're, we're, a country, we're a rule of law country. And they, they make decisions up there from time to time I don't agree with. But we are a country of rules and laws. And if we get away from that, we've lost everything that we have. 
Here I will suggest to you is the more important thing for us to really keep our eye on. I mean, that was a disappointing, there were a number of disappointing agreements that came out of the Supreme Court that week. But here's the more important thing. There is a very real possibility that we will select a president of the United States who over the next four years could select up to three really? United yeah, States well, Supreme really Court justices. Yeah. I want to tell you, as the governor of Texas, six of the nine justices on the Texas Supreme Court I appoint, and they are they are credential conservatives. And I'll say this you we haven't done a very good job. You want to know the truth of the matter. You look back at our history. Uh, since 1980, let's say that anyway, uh, and Republicans have missed it a time or two, or three or four. I think they, I, I think we put eight, they put four. Yeah, he didn't, was he didn't even count. Yeah. Uh, he was from so my point is, we need to make sure that we put people on that court that reflect the philosophy of the Republican Party and really reflect the philosophy of that president. So it, it's it's a that to me is the more important issue. Uh, it is making sure we elect someone who has a record and a record that is clearly conservative and its ability to and I, I'm biased here. I happen to think after eight years of a young inexperienced United States Senator who has got us in the ditch economically and has not put us in a very good position internationally that the American people are had it with young, inexperienced United States senators. And they want somebody who's got a record, an executive record to deliver. And, and I'll put my record up against anybody. Whether it's a job creation record, whether it's a conservative record, whether it's a record on, on the social issues, whatever that may be, my record's out there. And I'm proud of it. And I want to stand before the American people and say, this is what you're going to get. If you like Rick Perry, the president.